Hi, I'm Dave Troll at the Troll Gallery, a custom furniture shop in St. Petersburg, Florida. And I'm going to show you how to operate a wood router. First thing we're going to do is we're going to select our bit. And here I've got just a simple quarter round or round over bit. And we're going to install it in our router. And what I'm going to do is I slide it into my collet. I don't set it all the way down. If we go all the way down like that, there's a fair chance that there's some milling, an undersized milling, right at the tip of that shaft. And that's enough that as we're working, it can actually cause the vibration can cause the chuck to loosen a little because it can't grab it as tightly. So we're going to pull it up maybe an eighth to a quarter of an inch. And then we're going to go ahead and lock that down. And you want it you know, tight, but you don't want it too tight that you're never going to get that off. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set our depth of cut. And this is a plunge router. So this, we can set our depth of cut by simply plunging down. And when we lock it in place, that's going to determine how deep our cut is. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and set it up so that we can get a full quarter round on our piece. But we don't want to go too deep and get that extra lip. So in the case of a plunge router, there's a series of detents. And by having the shaft touch one of the detents as a stop, we've set where we want to go. We can lock it in place. And now we have a repeatable depth of cut. We can bring it up and know that every time we bring it down and lock it in place, it's at the same level. If we were doing this whole piece, both sides and ends, I might clamp it in the middle in one end, work my way around, move one of the clamps, keep going, move this clamp again. That way I can get around the whole thing. Um, you can also work on a router table. And the advantage that a router table gives you is the router is held in place and you can move your stock around. So we've got everything set up to make our cut. We can go ahead and plug our router in. Get on our glasses and hearing protection. And we want to remember when we're making our cuts to work with the rotation of the machine. So we're going to work the piece in front of us from right to left. So when we make our cut, we're going to start on this side. We're going to work from left to right, working with the uh, rotation of the cutter. And what that'll do for us is allow us to work at our own speed. If we were to work the other way, from right to left, that's called a climbing cut, the router will actually want to take off uh, at a pretty high rate of speed. Uh, and it cause, can cause some tear out and actually uh, become dangerous if you're not careful of what you're doing. So we'll go ahead and we'll set up, get our depth locked in place. And we've gone ahead and we've eased that edge. So you can see here, and it's probably hard to see on camera, but we've got uh, a quarter round with just a small, uh, small line. Really, with routers, your imagination is uh, the only thing that's going to hold you back. Really fun tool to use, one of my favorites. Uh, what I just tell people is practice with it, use it whenever you can. And you just keep finding more and more things you can do with it. It's a great all-around tool. So that's how to use a wood router. I'm Dave Troll with the Troll Gallery, the fine art of furniture making.